Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Hot Toys 1-6 scale Marvel figure unboxing and review. Today we're taking a look at Wenwu based off his appearance in Shang-Chi, specifically the limited edition suit version. I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below. They have pay in four plus a loyalty program. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon, and join button so you're notified as soon as a brand new review goes live on the channel. As for the box art, it not only looks great, which it does, it feels awesome. This entire top cover is done in a rubberized finish. Then the Ten Rings logo and the lightning, they're glossy, so they stand out against the matte background. His name is done in gold foil, then up the top, a Hot Toys exclusive sticker which this time actually means something. We have an edition size. Apparently, they only made 350 of these. I say apparently because I don't know if that's just in Hong Kong or if that's a worldwide edition size or that's just for the US. Who knows? I guess only Hot Toys. On the side of the box, we have his name once again, also in gold foil, and the rest of that lightning effect spilling over the edge from the front cover. On the back of the box, warnings and legal info. Is it just me, or is suit version kind of a lame name for this figure? Surely they could have come up with something else, like Wen Wu, Leader of the Ten Rings, or Wen Wu, Flashback Scene. No, they went with suit version. They may as well have called this guy Wen Wu, Business Casual Version. Underneath the top cover, we have an open window showcasing the figure inside. And around the back, some images of Wen Wu in his Business Casual appearance from the movie. This image in the middle is particularly interesting. Hot Toys, don't tease us like this. This should have always been a two-pack. With Wen Wu in his suit and young Shang-Chi. As it stands, who are we supposed to pair this guy with? The only real answer I can give you to that is where he's going to go in my collection. I'm going to pair him with himself, the other version of Wen Wu. You see, I like to show the evolution of characters, and having the Mandarin transition from a business suit to a battle suit, that does fit the bill. First in-hand impressions, Wen Wu is looking sharp, and that head sculpt, ooh, he is as good as ever. What we are going to do now, though, is get all of his accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything he comes with. Starting off with the display base first, which is done in the hexagonal style. They have lent into the blue, I'm noticing, which is the color of the rings when Wen Wu has them. The background is this rough textured finish, whereas the Ten Rings logo and the Shang-Chi logo, they're high gloss, so they do stand out. Around the front, Wen Wu, unfortunately, once again, the nameplate is crooked and set way too far down. Not sure what happened there. I do particularly like this translucent blue edge though, it helps this display base pop. Up top, an adjustable crotch grabber. Initially, I did think this was reused from the other Wen Wu. Upon checking, it isn't. This is all new for this figure. The lightning is cast in translucent blue plastic, so light passes through it. We also have some blue shading in certain spots, and over the top of the shading, a metallic pearlescent finish. Then for the five rings, that's right, there's only five here, you can count them if you so choose. They're painted in metallic copper with some sculpted detail around the edges, picked out in a metallic blue. The only complaint I have, why don't we have two of these, you know, so we can actually have him brandishing all of the ten rings, not just half of them. This is by far my favourite accessory here. It's the little box that he sets the ten rings in when he retires from being the Mandarin, to spend time with his wife and kids. Now the box itself, unfortunately, isn't wood, it's sculpted plastic. There's some wood grain texture on the surface, and the paint applications... Is it just me, or do they look just okay? The wood portion is dark brown with this very glossy sheen to it, not sure why that's a thing. There's also no shading or dry brushing or washes of any kind, at least on the wooden sections. For the metallic gold sections, they're shiny and there's some speckling. If only the same attention to detail could have been paid to the wooden sections. It's a nice shape with this rounded bottom and the roundness to the top as well. Of course, it can open. On the inside, some nice metallic gold and these metal chains are real metal chains. The rings themselves are removable and they are tiny. 
For something so small, there's a surprising amount of sculpted detail here on both sides and the edges. They are painted in the exact same way as the rings on the effect piece. Then around the inside perimeter of the box, there's some ornate sculpted detail. Something that normally you wouldn't really be looking out for, it's tucked right on in there. Call me crazy, I think that box is worth the price of admission. I know it's not going to be for everyone, there will be different reasons why you decide to pick this figure up or not. That box, it definitely does it for me. He comes with the swap out forearms with the rings on, in case you want to armor him up, you can. And to swap them out, it's actually not that easy. The instructions, they tell you to hyperextend the joint, to bend it past its limit and then it will pop out of the socket. I don't love that. I would recommend grabbing it up here, just above the top ring. If you grab the rings, they do tend to move around. You don't want to do that either. Grab it up here and then try and pull it out. If it doesn't work, okay, then try the hyperextension thing. Just not my favorite idea, trying to push joints past their limit. I don't think that's the best way of doing it. He does have five rings on either side, then you do have some skin texture between the rings. And the rings themselves, they are painted in the exact same way as the effect rings and the mini teeny tiny ones inside the box. And lastly, a full array of hands, ranging from gripping hands to splayed out finger hands to open palm hands and closed fists. On the left side, this is new for this particular version of Wu. he's got a wedding band on. And that goes for every hand on the left side. It's painted in metallic silver whereas the hands themselves have a really nice amount of skin texture to them. You can see vein work and some wrinkling and fingernails sculpted in as well. They do have a matte finish. They're not nasty and glossy looking. What we are going to do now though is get Wen Wu himself out here. Standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. On paper, this suit does sound pretty stupid. It's a green double-breasted suit jacket with a black shirt and the sleeves rolled up. Not everyone could pull this off. In fact, I know that I definitely couldn't. Tony Leung as Wen Wu, he does pull it off. Dude looks suave. In 1-6 scale, he is freaking rocking this suit. The tailoring, how it hugs the waist, but he's a little bit broad at the shoulders, on point. Even the way that the double-breasted jacket lays on the body, it's not too big and bulky like some Hot Toys suits have been in the past. The forearms being exposed and fully painted, a nice touch. More on that though, I do have thoughts. And lastly, the head sculpt. We already know it's good, we've seen this head sculpt before with the battle suit version of Wenwu. This head sculpt was too good to only use once. And it turns out, Hot Toys agreed. That's why they made this one. Up close and personal, kicking things off with his head sculpt. The first time I saw this with the battle suit Wenwu, this is the same head sculpt after all, I heaped so much praise on this head sculpt. I'm going to do the same thing here. It truly is a great head sculpt. I think it looks just like Tony Leung. I can see the likeness from everywhere, every angle. They've even got a dimple slightly deeper on one side, so with a head tilt, it looks like he's smirking. This dude, he is one cocky SOB. The Mandarin, he knows he can kick your butt. It is not a question. There are frown lines. We also have some crow's feet, plus some wrinkles on his neck. They didn't have to go this hard. I am so glad they did. The five o'clock shadow is subtle, present, however. There is complexion, we have some shading, and that speckling of skin texture on the surface. The hairline is crisp with this little bit of feathering along the edge. Then the hair itself is full. There's flow to it, and there is a lot of texture. I've got no complaints with this head sculpt. Zero complaints at all. Do weigh in down below. Am I going crazy, or is this head sculpt as good as I think it is? And Hot Toys as well. They've used it twice now. Around the back, there's not much to see here, except for how clean the stitch lines are. Up here for the shoulders, sharp as a pin, same thing with the one down the middle. Normally when you do buy a suit off the rack, not that Mandarin would be doing that, the vents need to be cut. And here, I guess it's the same thing, they are stitched in place. These vents, they should be open to allow for greater flexibility. I don't actually recommend cutting that though, please don't cut it and then tell me I've helped you ruin your figure, just leave it as is. It's something that you do in real life, not necessarily in 1-6 scale. 
His jacket is double-breasted, very classy. It's also short sleeve with this black kind of cuff section that might be his shirt coming through, but it isn't in 1-6 scale. It is connected with a press stud and you can open up the jacket. The shirt itself isn't a full shirt, it actually ends at the top of his sleeves. The sleeve itself is this kind of stretchy spandex material. I'm pretty sure they've done that for posing. So that means this for sure isn't this shirt, it's a faux cuff, if that's actually supposed to be his shirt rolled up. You can push it up even higher if you want to get more range of motion out of his elbows. The buttons are fake, as you just saw with that press stud, however the pockets are real. Would you actually put anything in there? Maybe. Potentially one of the ten rings. Actually, no, scratch that. Not one of my best ideas. In fact, probably one of my worst. This ring does not belong in that pocket. It can go in there if you choose to put it in. His forearms are nicely sculpted and painted. You've got vein work and some definition, plus the skin texture that we saw on the head sculpt. The wrist peg is very visible. I would have loved to have gotten seamless forearms here. You can't even use the world box ones. He has a ring on. So that means if you do use the world box one, then he's no longer accurate. The wedding ring would not be present. Don't forget, he does have swap out forearms. They have the 10 rings on. This being Mandarin, it makes sense that he has all 10 rings fully on display. The wrist pegs are even more visible on these forearms for some reason, and they bunch the sleeves up. This top ring, it pushes up the sleeves and it just doesn't lay right. Which is a darn shame because the rest of the tailoring is beautiful. It pinches in at the waist, it's broad at the shoulders, and the pants, they taper down to a nice point at the top of his shoes. Not to mention they break at the right height. There's a crease down the front. Overall, I just love the way the tailoring looks. This suit, the material choice, everything about it is spot on. If you don't believe me about the taper, you can see it for yourself. It's broader up the top than it is at the bottom for the ankle. Speaking of ankles, he's got socks on, which is great for posing. If you have him in a kicking pose, chances are you might. The pants would ride up and expose just bare plastic for the body. Having socks on, a must for a figure like this. His shoes being fully sculpted, including the laces, which are bar laced, super classy for Wen Wu. It's a lot of texture here. It almost looks like croc skin. And on the underside, nothing. They're completely smooth. To attach the effect piece, you don't necessarily attach it. He just holds on to one of the rings and then he's using the effect piece. You can have this as though he's whipping someone or you can flip it around and have it as though the rings are kind of surrounding him. I don't love this effect piece. I think effect pieces like this, they belong with more action-oriented figures. Whereas with a figure like this guy in a business suit, this is all class. It's suave and this effect piece, I think actually takes away from the look here. For a quick side-by-side -side comparison, on the left we have the suit version of Wen Wu and on the right, the battle suit one. If you ask me, right here and now, Justin. I have a budding MCU collection, I'm starting to build it out, I have Shang-Chi, I've got other MCU characters, which Wen Wu do I go with? I only want one. I'd be hard pressed to recommend the suited version as much as that pains me. You gotta go with the battle suit. It's more iconic and it's way more versatile. He's a touch taller than the suit version, however the head sculpt is the same. So the best part about the suited version you are getting anyway. Not to mention more effect pieces. You still get the forearms and he works with Shang-Chi. Whereas the suit version doesn't. In the scene that we see this business suit, Shang-Chi was a kid. So posing this guy up with adult Shang-Chi just doesn't make sense to me. Wait a second. I don't remember it being like this. Shang-Chi is significantly taller than his dad. I suppose that Simu Liu is just a taller actor than Tony Leung. Now that Wen Wu has ditched the big boots from the battlesuit version, the height difference has been exacerbated. That's just one more reason why I don't think these two make a great pairing. Going over articulation, I'm fairly certain most of us do know what to expect here. After all, he is just a dude in a business suit. Starting off with his head sculpt, it's on a fixed neck with a ball joint at the bottom. Looking forward to there, going back to there, swivel and pivot side to side. 
The arms do go up to there. They will go forward and back on soft ratchets. Butterfly joint at the shoulder that hinges up and down. Swivel at the bicep. Double bend at the elbow going the full way. Then for the wrist peg, a hinge and swivel. The torso crunches forward and back, swivels and pivots. The legs go forward to there, going out to there, swivel at the upper thigh. Double bend on ratchets at the knee, going way past 90. Then for the ankle, a double ball peg. Good for forward and back, swivel and pivot. Moving on to the three cool and three annoying things. The first annoying thing is you only get one effect piece. I get it, if you don't want to give us all the effect pieces from the battle suit one, save those as exclusive accessories for that figure. Yeah, that works. However, do give this version at least two of these. So you can have him posed up with all ten rings in action. The second annoying thing is the inconsistency in the size with the ten rings. The one on the left comes with the battle suit Wu, whereas this one comes with the suit version. As you can see, there is a drastic size difference. I didn't know that they could grow and shrink in size. I guess it makes sense, because they're magical. I still would have liked them to keep it consistent. The third annoying thing is this little oopsie right here. In the film, there was something on his lapel, so this does kind of need to be here. Not done this particular way. They've literally just put one piece of string across his lapel, and around the back, a piece of green fabric that unfortunately is sticking out. It's the one blemish on an otherwise really nice suit. The first cool thing, of course it's the box, it had to be. I love little accessories like this, I call them set dressing. You can just place them around the figure or have them interacting with them and it sets the scene. You could even give this to another character if you want to have Shang-Chi holding the box with the ten rings in it. Nothing stopping you. The second cool thing, all credit for this goes to S. Ben Toys on Facebook. He came up with this. It's so clever. These are the rings that come with the battle suit version of Wenwu. Considering this one is in a business suit, yeah, they should be powered down. They should just be hanging there. And the benefit of doing this is they hide the wrist pegs. So now this guy is entirely seamless from head to toe making him look even more realistic. The third cool thing, this head sculpt is the shit. Hot Toys, you nailed it with Tony Leung's likeness. The more I look at this head sculpt, and the other one, the battle suit one, because it's the same head sculpt, the more I like it. I'm just enamored with how good this looks. And with a subtle head tilt, it gives him so much personality. Wrapping up on Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, Hot Toys, Wenwu. Suit version. Still a very boring name for an otherwise really solid figure. He isn't going to be for everyone though. Who wants Tony Leung in a business suit? Fans of him like me? Yes. Crazy collectors who collect every figure from the line? Again, like me? Yes. Not everyone, however. Most people, they are going to be more than satisfied with the battle suit version. Why are we getting two versions of character that we're never going to see again, at least as far as I'm aware, in the MCU? It's all because of that head sculpt. Hot Toys knew that that head sculpt was too good to only use once, and I agree, it is sensational. But why this suit? Arguably the more iconic look for Wenwu other than his battle suit is his white martial arts gi. That's the suit that he was wearing when he first met his wife. The only person in his lifetime, except for his son, who could challenge him with the ten rings on. And she was also the driving force behind most of the stuff he was doing in the film. I would have preferred that look for Wenwu. In saying that, do I hate this? No, I don't hate this. I freaking love this figure, even though that other outfit makes way more sense to me. I don't care, I'm still really, really glad we got this guy in 1 6 scale. The tailoring, almost perfect. The way it hugs the body, how it pinches in at the waist, it might just be Hot Toy's finest attempt at tailoring a suit ever. We have custom makers out there making beautiful suits, and this comes pretty freaking close. Not to mention the icing on the cake, the head sculpt. You all already know, I think it's a home run. If you want this guy, if you think that he's going to stand out, or if you're just a fan of Tony Leung, 
You could do a hell of a lot worse than Wen Wu suit version. Once again, yes, that is his actual name. I got mine from toyswonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below. They have pay in for and a loyalty program. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon and join button. If you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews. Like, comment and subscribe and we'll catch you in the next video.